weekly Ask a Cleaning Expert. We are so excited to have you here. I am the host, your cleaning expert, Melissa Homer, Chief Cleaning Officer of Microfiber Wholesale. I am a professional cleaning expert with over 20 years experience. Cleaning expert. Sorry about that, everybody. I had a bit of a replay of my content and I'm not sure what's happening there. Hopefully it doesn't echo again. My apologies. All right, I think we've got it fixed now. Sorry, I had too many tabs open and apparently I was talking to myself, which is, you know, kind of diagnosable, but hopefully not for this situation. Now let's focus again. <laughs> so welcome to our live stream. I am your host, Melissa Homer, Chief Cleaning Officer of Microfiber Wholesale. I'm a professional cleaning expert with over 20 years in the professional cleaning industry. I have worked with some of the biggest names in the residential cleaning world, uh, including one of the largest residential cleaning franchises in America called Made Pro for over 18 years. Previous to that, I also worked for one of the largest commercial chemical manufacturers, actually one of the largest manufacturers in general in the world, which is Procter & Gamble in their commercial products division. So I have worked on the manufacturing side, on the professional cleaning side. I have written articles regularly for magazines, including Good Housekeeping, Better Homes and Gardens, Real Simple, Washington Post, uh, This Old House, Pure Wow, you name it, I've been in it, um, sharing my cleaning advice with the world. Uh, especially at the moment, I am also on the cleaning board for Spruce Magazine, uh, reviewing all of their home cleaning tips for accuracy and uh, technical uh, uh, accuracy. But most importantly, I'm here to help you. Mug Farpa Wholesale was kind enough to bring me on board so that I can support their customers and their listeners with any cleaning questions they have. So, for anyone out there today, please come into the chat, ask questions, and we'll be so excited to see you here. While we are waiting for some people to join the chat, I am going to answer some questions that I know I've had a lot of times before that I think might help our listeners. So let's go ahead and dig in with a question I know I get all the time, which is, what do I do about glass? Glass drives me crazy. I try Windex, I try Method Window Cleaner, I've tried all the different products and I can't get the glass to stop streaking. What do I do? I get this question all the time. And the answer is, it's not the product that you're using. It's actually the towel that you're cleaning with. When you clean glass, what you're seeing, those streaks are residue. They are leftover soap and body oils and dead skin cells and whatever else was clinging to the glass. Your towel, whether you used a paper towel or a cotton towel or a cheap microfiber towel, was not picking enough, was not picking up enough of the dirt. So it leaves streaks behind. If you want to fix that, you need to upgrade your towels. If you use a true microfiber towel, if you use a true high quality microfiber towel, it will actually take off all the lint, all the dirt, all the soap residue and leave behind nothing but the shine. So 
Uh, I will show an example here. This is our all-purpose towel. It's great for general dusting, general cleaning. And yes, you can clean glass with it beautifully. This is gonna pull off all that dirt, all that grime, all those streaks, and get you the results you're looking for. The other thing you wanna do, if you're just using this towel, it'll work great. But the best thing you can do is use our glass towel. The glass towel is gonna to make a huge difference for you because I don't know if you can see here, but it's actually a different weave than most microfiber you're used to. Can you see all those little knots? Those little knots help the microfiber pull off any lint, any last residue, and they support the fibers of the microfiber. So even though it's tiny microscopic strands, they're not gonna snap and leave micro lint. This is a, the most lint-free microfiber towel you're gonna buy. And so when you use this on glass, you can use just plain water and rub, and every last streak, every last piece of lint is just gonna melt off. No problems, no fuss, no muss. So if you have challenges with glass, this is the product for you. Now it looks like I've got some live viewers and some questions. All right, uh, let's see here. Let me show this question here. Hey, Melissa, how often should I clean my washing machine? And are there any products you'd recommend to clean it? Great question, Em. So your washing machine does need to be washed. I know that sounds weird. It's well, washing machine is washing itself all the time, isn't it? No, it's washing your clothes, not itself. And the insides of the machine can actually get rather gunky and gross. One of the big reasons is everyone uses too much dish soap. If you are using anything more than two ounces max for a big full load of laundry, you are using too much dish soap and too much, I said not dish soap, laundry detergent. You're using um, too much laundry detergent and too much softener. Most loads can be done with two ounces or less. Best trick is to grab a little shot glass to use that to measure your laundry detergent and keep yourself honest. If you use the caps, you're gonna use way too much product. To clean the machine itself though, the product I recommend is called a fresh. A fresh makes wonderful tablets to clean your washing machine. All you have to do is run it on, uh, it will tell you the cycle to run. Some, some of your machines will have a tub clean cycle already. Some of you just wanna run the hot water cycle, but uh, depending on how old your machine is, that tablet will break up and uh, destroy all of that gunk building up in your machine, the buildup, the mold, the uh, biofilm, the scum, and it will get it to all wash out out of the inner workings of the machine on the outside of that spin barrel. So it will no longer be funky and smelly and gross. I will note, however, that the a fresh product only works in the drum of the machine itself. It is not going to solve old gasket problems or overloaded soap tray problems. So if you've been using a ton of um, detergent and fabric softener, most likely it has started to splash around inside that soap tray when the water hits it. And that can cause a lot of mold and disgusting growth and buildup in that soap tray channel. So if your machine has a funky smell and you run the wash cycle and you cleaned it and you're like, oh, it still smells bad, I will bet you 20 bucks you will find that if you pull out that tray, yikes. Um, in that case, they're just release it. There's usually a tab, push it, it'll come out. At that point, you're gonna wipe it out in there with a uh, disinfecting cleaner to clean out all the gunk that's built up in there, wash up the tray as well, reassemble, and you should be back in business. The gasket does need to be wiped down regularly. Um, if it is an old machine, I'll be upfront, your gasket's gonna be gross and there's not gonna be much you can do to keep it aesthetically pleasing. Old gaskets on those first OG front load washers were not properly designed. They didn't know what they were doing at the time and they created them in such a way that they trapped water. And no matter how fastidious you were, everyone ended up with black moldy growth and disgusting stains on those original OG front load washers. 
It's not your fault. If you have one of those, don't even bother trying to replace the gasket because the stain will just come back over time. Just know that when you upgrade machines to a newer one, that problem will go away. If you have that old machine, just keep washing it with a beach bleach-based cleaner to try to keep it at bay, but you're never going to get it to look new again. But once you upgrade to a newer machine, all of them now have little suction ports in the gasket that suck out the water during the wash cycle, so they never get like that again. So to sum up, to wash your machine, all you need is a fresh, um, run it on the tub clean cycle or hot water cycle, wipe out the soap tray occasionally, especially if you've been using too much soap, use less soap, and keep your gasket clean. There you go. Let's see if we have any other questions. While we're waiting, I'll actually shamelessly plug some fun things we're doing today. We are doing giveaways and we are doing discount codes. So first, I'm going to share with you our discount code for this week, and that's ASKME15. If you watch this live stream either live or rewatch it later, you can use the ASKME15 promo code and get a nice discount on anything you buy from Mark Forever Wholesale. Feel free to scan that QR code now. I'm going to take this off the screen, but it should also live in the comments as well. The other thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing some giveaways. If people ask great questions, I've been authorized to give away product, which is a lot of fun. So ask me a good question and you're going to get go home with something. And at the end of the hour, whoever's asked me the best question is going to get our ultimate microfiber cleaning kit. For those who haven't seen it, I'm going to make y'all excited. This is our ultimate microfiber cleaning kit. As you can see by the size of the box here, I'm not messing around with this giveaway. This is over $100 worth of cleaning product. The ultimate microfiber cleaning kit has in it mops and dusters and um, towels and everything you need to take care of your home beautifully. All of our best stuff, all of our most popular products, all put together in one handy dandy kit so that you can clean your whole house from top to bottom with the fastest performing microfiber on the market. If you've never worked with our microfiber before, you'll find that you are stunned at how much faster you're able to clean when you have premium microfiber working for you instead of cheap towels working against you. This kit, you're gonna find yourself mopping, dusting, and wiping down surfaces and getting things to come up the first time instead of the second and the third time with the junk you've been using before. So you want that kit. So you better ask me some questions. While I'm waiting for some more questions in the chat, I'm gonna go ahead and answer another question I know is a popular one. So the one I'm gonna handle right now is one I actually had just got over email earlier this week, which is I had a microfiber wholesale customer reach out to me over ask an expert at microfiberwholesale.com Shameless plug, if you have cleaning questions that you don't wanna wait till Friday, just send them to askanexpert at microfiberwholesale.com and we are happy to answer your questions for you. They go right to me and I'll gladly give you my expert advice. This customer asked, what do they do about a scratched up fiberglass tub? They had a professional cleaner, unfortunately that was not well-trained and they were using aggressive scrubbing pads and um, a, a abrasive powders in their tub and they scratched up the fiberglass such that it was now all dull and unpleasant looking. Um, and they want to know, is there anything I can do? And the answer is, there's basically uh, two things here. One, you really can't unscratch fiberglass. Once the finish is marred, it's marred, but you can obscure it. The way you want to do that is the product I recommend called gel gloss, fiberglass polish. It's an old school formula that not a lot of people realize is out there, but it is a absolute money saver if you've messed up your bathroom and you don't want to remodel. The gel gloss will fill in all those uh, fine microscopic scratches that are making the finish dull and make it look beautiful and shiny again. It lasts for months. It's easy to apply. Anyone can do it. Um, if your bathroom's looking old and drab, gel gloss is for you. Um, if you are a professional cleaner that didn't know what they were doing and was using too aggressive a pad or um, too strong an abrasive powder in a bathroom and you want to save yourself, this is the product you're going to use to get your customer's bathroom looking back to, to square. Um, 
the other option most people don't realize is out there is you can actually reglaze a tub if it's porcelain. That's not going to work for fiberglass. They'll use a paint and other products for that sort of surface. But um, for uh, fiberglass in specific, you can't really quite do the same thing. They use different products. But for ceramic, they can actually reglaze the ceramic and give you a new coating on your tub. You will see DIY products to do this. Run away. Do not do it, OK? Trust me, I've seen people try to do it themselves. It is sad, bad day. It comes out gloppy and uneven. You are not a trained professional when it comes to putting on glazes. They have to be ultra smooth and even. You really do need the airbrush and everything taped off perfectly. And you want someone that does this for a living to do it for you if you don't want junky looking results. So there's a bunch of companies out there that usually charge like, you know, 300 bucks or something. Uh, but it's so much better than a full remodel. They'll come in in one day, deep clean, reglaze, and your sad old tub and shower will look like new. Um, so keep that option in mind. Let's see, we got a question here. I feel like my sink is always dirty no matter how often I clean it. Is there anything I do to keep, can do to keep it looking clean longer? It's just a standard stainless steel sink. What a great question, Kyle. So his question. What do I do to keep my stainless steel sink looking cleaner longer? It's tough because stainless steel obviously um, shows everything. So if it's getting marred and dirty, it can look pretty gross pretty fast. Um, there is actually a polish that I love. Let me see if I can get this to come up really quickly here. And I think it's, let me make sure I got it right here. Yes, I am right. Hope's Perfect Sink. So Hope's Perfect Sink is a wonderful product for stainless steel sinks. If you want to give them that nice, slick, glossy shine that lasts longer. What Perfect Sink does is it's actually putting a hydrophobic coating on your stainless steel so that all the food particles and water and soap residue and anything that's happening in your sink sloughs off into the drain easier and quick. So it lasts, that clean look lasts longer. Now it's not permanent. It's not a permanent coating. You're going to have to put it on, you know, every couple of months it's going to wear off. But if you use that product and rinse your sink regularly after you clean it with it, the sheeting action will get everything off and it will look way better for far longer. So Perfect Sink is a great product. Sealants in general, wherever you use them, always help you keep things looking cleaner longer, make it easier to deal with stains because the sealants protect that initial surface underneath. So if you want your stainless steel, stainless steel sink to look great, Hope's Perfect Sink, absolutely chef's kiss. All right, let's go ahead and answer this next question. Can you talk about product dwell times? As in vinegar to break down hard water deposits, disinfectants, barkeepers, friends, and such. Great question. So dwell time. Okay, I'm going to geek out with you for one second here. And I'm going to talk about the cleaning wheel. So if you study cleaning, they're going to tell you there's basically four things, four levers you can pull, four parts of the wheel that you have control over to get things clean. And every cleaning scientist knows this basic principle. You get heat, dwell time, agitation, and chemistry. That's it. Those are your choices. If I want something clean and I don't want to scrub a lot, I can either let it soak longer, I can make the water hotter, or I can use crazier chemicals. If I don't want to use crazy chemicals because I'm scared of them, I'd better scrub harder, turn up the heat, or wait longer. All these two pieces of the wheel are interconnected. If I want to take one down, I got to add it somewhere else. That's how it works. So dwell time is one of the key pillars to you being able to clean the way you want to clean. If you do not wait long enough for the soap to do its job, you are now making one of these other parts of the wheel go up. If you do not wait for the product to do its job, you must scrub harder. You must use stronger chemicals or you must rack up the heat, all of which come with danger risks. So dwell time is your least risky thing you can do to help you clean. So you've got to take advantage of it. When it comes to most products, they'll tell you right on the back of the bottle 
how long to wait. And everyone ignores them. And I don't know why. Chemists aren't messing with you. They write the back of the bottle for a reason. They want you to get the product, have it work, and have you buy it again, which you won't do if you don't follow the directions. Okay. And the directions will tell you for most disinfectants, it's at least a 10 minute wait. Uh, for some products, it's an hour or more. Uh, use the example for vinegar and hard water. Um, vinegar is going to be a minimum of 10 minutes. Often it's going to be like a half hour plus. Now there's one challenge here. I will mention that, you know, everyone says, oh, I want to use vinegar to handle hard, hard water. You can, but only in certain scenarios. Vinegar is an acid. Absolutely. Acetic acid, 5%. It will dissolve minerals. Yay. But it's a very thin, runny liquid. If you are trying to apply it to a vertical surface like a shower, it's going to run right down. If you're trying to get something like a coffee pot with hard water and you want to put some water and vinegar in there, great. It's contained. It will stay wet that whole time and can soak as long as you want. You can leave it in there for an hour and it'll continue to break down the minerals. Good day. But if you're trying to clean a vertical surface, vinegar is not going to do what you want it to do. In that case, you need a hard water cleaner that's designed to clean the vertical surfaces, something like a barkeeper's friend. But whether you're using vinegar or barkeeper's friend, you got to give the acid time to dissolve the minerals. It's going to take at least 10 minutes. If you skimp on the step, the part didn't actually do anything for you at all. You just sat there with elbow grease, hammering it out, and the chemistry didn't get a chance to do its job. Um, for example, if you have a really awful toilet with tons of hard water, you may want to put um, barkeeper's friend or vinegar in the bowl and let it sit overnight and let those vinegars, uh, that acidity, break down all the minerals that you're trying to deal with. If you just put it in there and start scrubbing right away, the vinegar is not doing anything for you. It hasn't had a chance to do its chemical reaction. So give it time. I should note, because you asked about disinfectants, that not all disinfectants have the same dwell time. Please read the back of your bottles if you are working with a disinfectant, especially if you're working commercially. Um, there are hardcore disinfectants, uh, like I know um, in my commercial world, Betco Quatstat 5. Um, and it has like a five minute dwell time. It's super fast and 30 second sanitization, but it's a pretty potent chemical. Uh, they're not gonna sell that at the grocery store. That's meant for dealing with things like cleaning emergency rooms and um, operating rooms where they need to be able to turn the room fast. If you're working with that type of product, you can work very quickly. But if you're working with the products that most of you are gonna have access to, it's probably gonna be 10 minutes. And if you don't, what you've done is you killed the weaker germs and left the stronger germs to hang out. And now those stronger germs are the ones that mate and make superbugs. So we don't like that, okay? If you're gonna use disinfectants, use them the right way, give them the proper dwell time so everybody gets killed and you don't leave the biggest and the strongest left behind to go hang out with each other, okay? Hope that helps. Let's see here. Does commercial cleaners damage your clothes? I want to try window cloths. Great question. So commercial cleaning chemicals, for the most part, depending on what you're using, should not damage your microfiber at all. Uh, they're designed to be used commercial cleaning. Um, in fact, microfiber is the gold standard for commercial cleaning because it cleans everything so quickly. So if you're using standard chemicals, you should be in good shape. If you're working with any product that says it dissolves plastics, um, that you're gonna wanna keep off of any synthetic fabric, whether it's your polyester shirt or microfiber, which again is also a synthetic fabric. So if you're ever working with a chemical that says keep it off plastics, it dissolves plastics, you're not gonna want that on any synthetic material like your clothes or your microfiber towels. But as long as it doesn't say it dissolves plastic, you should be good to go. And the window cleaning cloth, I'm going to tell you, actually, I can have fun here. Beth, you want to try our window cleaning cloths? Cool. I'm going to send you some. So, Beth, here's what I need you to do. At the end of this live, be sure to email askanexpert at microfiberwholesale.com. Tell me you're Beth, and that way I can get your address, and I'm going to send you a pack of glass towels on me. I was told I get to give giveaways. Why not to someone who wants one? 
So Beth, you got a, a set of bathroom, uh, sorry, a set of cleaning towels on me. I hope you love them. You're going to fall in love. I'll tell you right now, the first time I used a glass towel, I was actively angry. I think I've told this story before, but I will tell you, I have never been more pissed in my life than the first time I tried a glass towel. And you want to know why? Because I realized how much time I'd been wasting with every other towel. I tried so many window cleaners and I remember reading so many hacks and you know, people cleaning outside windows with newspaper and all this nonsense. And it was always the towel. It was never the chemical. I tried all these chemicals for nothing. And I finally got a good towel and you can use just plain water. Just literally take some water from the sink, spritz it up there, wipe it down and poof, your glass is perfect every time. No fuss. I've never been more mad at my former self for not having gotten these sooner. Let me tell you. Let's see here. Do we have any other questions waiting for us? While I'm waiting, I'm going to go ahead and remind everybody that we do have our coupon code, ASKME15. Uh, it's a promotion for people that watch our live streams. Please enjoy. Go grab some product from us. We have all sorts of great stuff uh, available. We have mops. We have dusters. We have towels. We have um, so many wonderful products. Please come check us out. And for those here live, if you ask a great question, I'm giving giveaways. I just give away some glass towels. I'll gladly give more stuff. Ask more great questions. You'll get more great product. Oh, it looks like I got my next question. How to keep patina copper sink clean and uniform in color. I usually use pink stuff paste on it for everyday cleaning. But it was getting built a buildup, so I used Barkeeper Friend, and it came out like a shiny penny. And now my patina is not uniform. Oh no! Okay, so <laughs> wonderful question, Crystal. Patina copper sinks are a whole genre of cleaning. So let's talk about it. Copper sinks, obviously, copper oxidizes. Some people love that look. They pay for that look. That patina is what they want. Some, oh, can I, oh, sorry, quick question here. I got Beth asking for that email again, and it's ask an expert at microfiberwholesale.com. So ask an, so A-S-K-A-N-E-X-P-E-R-T at microfiberwholesale.com for anyone that ever wants to email me. In your case, Beth, you're getting your glass cloths, but if anyone has any cleaning questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Now, Back to the question on copper sinks and how we care for them. Copper sinks are beautiful, whether they're shiny like a penny or have a gorgeous patina or everything in between. Everyone loves a different look. Some people like that nice, uniform, smooth, darker brown patina. Some like that splotchy in between with the sort of greens and the browns and the copper all kind of intermixed. Some people like it shiny copper penny. Depending on what you want, you need to use different products. If you want to preserve any amount of patina, you've got to keep acids off of it. Barkeeper's friend is powdered oxalic acid. That's going to dissolve and remove oxidation. That's what it's for. So any patina that is on something is going to come right off with Barkeeper's friend. That's what we want it for. So, but you don't want that because you want your copper sink to look uniform. So if you have a copper sink at home, no acids. That means no vinegar. That means no barkeeper's friend. That means no wink, no CLR. Um, even some hair products um, or vinegars, um, especially if it's a kitchen sink, beware of how you pour things down the drain if you're using vinegar um, because anything acid is going to screw up that patina. The good news is you can fix it. So let's talk about that part. If you've already messed up your sink. First, over time, the patina will come back on its own, but it may not be even in uniform like you want it to be. Um, the product, I want to make sure I get the right name, just one second here. I believe it's the Jax brand. Yes, if you type in J-A-X and patina into uh, Amazon, you will find the whole line of Jax patina products. Jack's Patina Products is what the professionals use to create that patina evenly in copper sinks. And you can buy it too if you go to Amazon. And what's going to happen is you're going to take that sink, the one you messed up, you're going to use that Barkeeper's Friend on it one more time. 
and you're going to get off all the finish you can so that it's nice and evenly shiny copper sinky. At that point, you're going to use the jacks and they give you choices. They'll say black finish, bronze finish, brown finish, green finish. You pick the one you want and you apply that chemical. It'll give you directions at the back of the bottle and that will evenly cause a chemical reaction across the whole copper sink and evenly patina the sink just like it came out of the factory. Once you've done that, you now have a restored surface you can keep clean with any non-acid, non-abrasive products. So all-purpose cleaner, uh, there's a copper sink wax you can use to kind of try to protect it some, uh, but be careful about any acid products going forward. Um, I will also mention if I can hear, um, I can find the product here real quick. Why can't I find it? All right. Well, I will find it in a moment and I'll bring it up later. But basically, there are some sealants that you can use on copper. Uh, let me see if I can find that one more time. Sorry, this is going to frustrate me unless I can find it because it's a really good product for you. Ah, I haven't used the product in ages, so it's not dawning on me right now, but it's going to aggravate me later. And I'm going to come up at 3 a.m. and say, ah, oh, this product. But there's a metal seal I'll have to think of for you later, and I'll send you actually over email um, that you can use to coat the copper zinc so that you are able to lock in that patina. But hopefully that will come into my brain in a few moments. Let's see, but we'll move on for right now. Let's see here. I got another question. I work remotely. Would my cleaning service rather me leave while I'm cleaning? Maybe they are too nice to ask. Always been curious about this. <laughs> Wonderful question, Eric. So when you have a professional cleaner, the age old question, whether you work from home or you're a stay at home mom or whatever is to be there or not to be there. And the answer is it's your home. It's your call. You're totally allowed to live in your house and live your life while your cleaner cleans. They're totally used to it. But if you're going to be home, you get to be a good host. When you have anyone come to your home, whether it's an electrician or a plumber or a contractor, you trust them as the professional tradesperson they are that's well-trained to do their job right. You're not standing there staring at them while they're doing the plumbing going, hey, is that the right wrench? Are you sure you should be using that wrench? You're not doing that to them, are you? No, you leave them alone because you believe in their skill set. You need to do the same thing with your house cleaner. If you want to be home with the house cleaner, great. Your job is to stay out of their way, find someplace else to be, grab yourself a cup of coffee, go in the other room, just type on your laptop. When they need to clean that room, get yourself out of there, go into the next room, stay out of their way, and no hovering and helicoptering. If you hover in helicopter, just like anybody, when you're cleaning and someone's over your shoulder going like this, it's panic inducing. People clean poorly. They clean too quickly. They start doing weird stuff they would never do because they feel like the customer is judging them and staring at them. So if you want to be home, that's fine. But no helicopter momming the poor cleaner. Get out of the way. Let the professional do their job. When they're done with the room, if you want to go inspect it, you should. Go ahead and look at the room see how gloriously gorgeous it is. If there's anything that's not your personal taste, you can go ahead and catch them in the next room and politely say, thank you so much for cleaning that kitchen. It looks gorgeous. Um, I just ask if you could re-polish uh, my uh, dishwasher just one more time. Um, my personal taste, I really like it, you know, ultra shiny. And I noticed there's still some streaks left. You did a great job, but, you know, that's something that's really important to me. I'd really appreciate if you did that. You notice I didn't tell them you did a bad job on the dishwasher. I told them it's my personal taste. If you use that languaging, you can have a meaningful conversation with your professional cleaner, give them great advice without insulting anyone's skill set because your taste in cleaning may be different than theirs. It's not their fault that their taste and your taste don't line up. All you have to do is be honest and say, this is my personal preference. They'll fix it and you're good to go. So yeah, go ahead, be home. Just don't be underfoot. All right. We got another great question here. Hey, Melissa, how to keep pet fur at bay? I'm using a mop system 
Can I use the wet mop pads or the dust mops? Thanks. Hannah, great question. <clears throat> so when it comes to pet hair, honestly, we love our furry friends, but man, do they make a mess. And depending on the breed of dog you have, there's only so much you can do. Even if you're constantly cleaning, they're constantly shedding. So how do you manage the situation? First, you want to use proper dry dusting and wet mopping technique. I'm going to shamelessly plug because we've got good stuff. If you aren't dry dusting, you aren't keeping up with pet hair properly. Um, dry dusting uses nice, soft, fluffy cut pile microfiber and microfiber loops to dust the floors. And what that's going to do is going to catch all those hairs and keep them from sticking up on the floor and pick up all that dander and dust and pull it away. It's going to make keeping it up with your floors so easy. It slides and glides. You don't have to get the vacuum out. I love the vacuum for professional world where you have a lot more acreage to cover and you can't be switching pads so often. But for uh, residential work, absolutely. Dry dust pads are wonderful. Slide and glide them around in two seconds. Nice and silent, nice and light. Weeze around and keep up with that hair. When you're mopping a high quality wet mop, again, I have to shamelessly plug our stuff because I love it. And that's why I joined this company is because I love their products. I use them for over a decade. Um, that nice thick pile of uh, wet loop microfiber is going to wash off any stuck on hairs and keep everything at bay. Now let's talk other types of flooring though, because I don't want to just talk microfiber. I want to help you with everything. If you've got pet hair, on your carpets and on your couches, you're going to need to vacuum a lot, no kidding, with a machine that's designed around pet hair. There's a lot of models out there. Uh, the Dyson Animal Ball is one of the classics that I love where they designed the brush and uh, suction power around trying to deal with all that pet hair. When it comes to your upholstery, you're gonna want a spin brush attachment for the couch. Um, if your vacuum didn't come with one, buy it separate aftermarket. Um, there's these little upholstery spin brushes. They're like four inches wide. And it's a rotary brush that's spun by the air of your vacuum. That will brush off all the dog hair and the cat hair and get that off. Um, if you don't have a canister vacuum and you only have an upright and you're fighting your couch, the other way to handle it is something called the lily brush. Um, it's basically a... a, um, a, a brush with like little fine bristles and rubber. Um, you actually, that's the other thing you can use as well. If you want to get the lily brush, it does a great job pulling out those hairs. If you don't want to get that, you can even just take some old fashioned rubber gloves. Anything rubber is going to, if you use quick short strokes, pull up the hair and pull it into a fluff. Um, they actually, again, if you go on to Amazon and type in rubber broom or rubber pet broom, you're going to see these wider brooms that are little rubber bristles. And if you use quick short strokes, it pulls up all the pet hair and, and kind of mats it up into a ball and gets it right off. Um, that is another easy way to keep up with your pet hair. I highly recommend keeping up with your couches and keeping up with your carpets. More often than not, when people are saying they're having trouble with their pet hair, if they're not addressing it everywhere. They're only addressing it on the hard floors and really it's flowing like tumbleweed from their couches and their carpets over to the floors so they think they didn't do a good job. They did. It's just it's blowing in from somewhere else. Um, the last piece I will tell you for the um, pet hair is actually it's also how you brush your dog. Um, totally. And I know it doesn't have anything to do with cleaning, but just because it all is adjacent to my world. Uh, the Furinator brush is kind of flipping awesome. Um, it does a great job pulling the um, undercoat uh shedded hair out of your even the fluffiest of dogs so um that brush if you're brushing your dog regularly there's less flying off of them less to get everywhere so furinator brush is your friend depending on how chill your dog is the furinator even makes an attachment for your vacuum i personally have never owned a dog chill enough to hang out and be vacuumed but if you have a really chill dog you can actually brush them with the furinator attached to the vacuum hose and it will suck up the hair as you brush, which is just stinking magical. So if you have a chill dog, that's 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 the ultimate solution. But I've never I've only owned hyper dogs that were scared. I turned second. I turned the vacuum on. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead here. Let's see. Um, 
Great advice in the patina sink. Thank you. Love this. Oh, thank you. Right back at you. Crystal, thank you so much. Um, also, best way to clean blinds, especially small blinds. I've used every gadget and they all seem to take as long as wiping each slat. Oh, I feel you, Crystal. Um, so first, Crystal, you're going to email me at askanexpert at microfiberwholesale.com as well, because you've been awesome and asking great questions. And I want to give you a variety pack of our towels so you can try a little bit of everything from our line. So the answer to mini slats is honestly, they stink. They're really hard to take care of. Um, I wish I had a nice answer, but I'm not going to give a nice answer. They're horrible. Every cleaner dreads them. Um, <laughs> we're right with you in this pain. Um, the best you can do is the following procedure. One, clean them frequently. If you're not on top of them, then it's much harder. You have to really sit there scrubbing every slat. Okay. So one, clean them frequently. Two, how do you clean them? What you're going to do is use your vacuum with the upholstery brush attachment. Um, hopefully you have a vacuum that has a hose that's attachable. You want an upholstery attachment that has a bristle brush, not the flat part, you know, one with a, 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 a nice nylon or horsehair brush or the dust cut brush, something bristly. You're going to close the blinds one way and vacuum down. Be gentle. We know those strings love to snap. Okay. So rub and vacuum and rub and vacuum. You can kind of push it up a little bit to get in that middle part in between, but work it down and get as much as you can vacuumed off. Then spin the blinds the other way and vacuum the back doing the same thing. You want to vacuum down a little bit of a scrubby action to try to push up those blinds a bit and vacuum down the other side. I want to get as much off with that vacuum and brush as I can. Now that I've cleaned it mostly, I'm going to close it back the other way, use my favorite all-purpose cleaner and my all-purpose microfiber towel. And when it's closed, I'm going to wipe down and push up a little bit as I do a little scrub action like that to get in that little part that's, you know, uh, covered by the overlap a bit. Wipe down, spin it the other way, do it again on the other side. If you do this regularly, you won't need to do the every slat game. If you've waited till they're gross, the only solution is the take them down, put them in the sink, in the, the bathtub, you know, spray them down, wash them. It's pain in the butt. No one likes it. There are services that will come and take your blinds down and put them in like um, a big vat that uh, uh, cleans them with a, a ultrasonic um, uh, technology. But honestly, by the time you're done with those people, you might as well have bought new blinds because they're kind of expensive. So the real answer is clean them more frequently. Um, and that will make it as least miserable a process as possible. I wish I had a nicer answer, but I'll at least send you a variety pack of towels so that when you're doing it and you're cursing things out, <laughs> it's, it's at least uh, you have some nice, great product to do it with. Buzzy's, Buzzy's asking me, is the microfiber on all sides is the cleaner can be used on Otto's paint? All right. Um, Buzzy, what, I'm not sure which procedure you're referring to because this may have been asked when I was in the middle of something else. I apologize. Um, I'm presuming you were asking about... Actually, I don't know what, which question you were asking about. Um, I can tell you that in general, microfiber is perfectly safe, safe on auto paint. Uh, does a great job buffing it. Car enthusiasts love to clean with microfiber. Um, for most cleaners uh, on auto paint, you can use any all-purpose cleaner, anything non-acidic. Um, be careful with Carfish in that it is a softer finish. Um, it can be easily marred, so you don't want any abrasive powders on um, your car finish. You can do some serious damage. Uh, you don't want anything heavily alkaline or heavily acidic. Again, you can dull that finish and start to pit it. Um, if you've screwed up your finish, uh, one of my favorite quick fix products is Meguiar's Scratch X. Love that product. A uh, little black tube of magic. So any dumb thing you've done, a little fender bender, a little scratchy poo, uh, dulling your finish with some product you shouldn't have, go ahead and buff in Meguiar Scratch X. It will hide everything. Um, let's see here. Hi, Melissa. I'm researching to start my own cleaning service. I have nothing as of yet to start with the supplies. What supplies should I have to begin with? Cecilia, I am your girl. You found your spot. I got you. I got an answer for this. And the answer is 
I actually desi designed a cleaning company starter kit. No, really. That was like one of the first things I insisted on when I joined Mike Fiber Wholesale. So I used to work for MadePro, a residential cleaning franchise. And I was in charge of the supplies for over 18 years. And I can tell you, figuring out which products, how much, what quantities, what tools you really need, not need is hard. It was a full-time job for 18 years. And I knew that for cleaning companies starting out, it was a really uphill task to figure out what do I need? What, how much do I, should I pack per house? How much inventory do I need? And for new companies with not much money to start with, it's a big deal if you mess up and you get the wrong stuff. So I said, when I joined, one of the first things I wanted to do was to build a cleaning company in a box. And it's our um, cleaning company starter kit. And it has literally everything you need in the right quantities to have one full cleaner clean for over a year. So when you start, this is the only kit you need for the full year until you start hiring more employees, which is of course the best reason to reorder. Um, that cleaning company starter kit has dusters, sponges, towels, towels in different colors so you can manage cross-contamination between kitchens and bathrooms and other germy areas. It has mop pads, mop frames, uh, extension poles, all the things you need to clean anything ceiling to floor. And one of the best parts about it is I designed it so that you'd have enough for three days of laundry. And if you're getting into professional cleaning, hear me right now, you need three days of inventory. Why? Because you want to get home. I'll explain. If you have three days of inventory, you've got one day's worth of laundry out cleaning, making you money. Then you've got the laundry from yesterday that was gross coming in that you need to put through the wash. That third day's laundry is the laundry you washed yesterday that you left so that you could pack it up later. If I'm running a professional company, I need to get home to my own house. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my staff come in every morning. I'm gonna give them new supplies, take their dirty supplies. They're gonna go out and make money with that first day's worth of towels. I'm gonna take that dirty towels from yesterday, throw them in the laundry, let them run through the washer and dryer. And then I'm gonna saunter over to the laundry that was done yesterday and pack it up into neat little per house allotments, standardized amounts per home. So I'm sure every towel goes to one house, is in Dragon germs from house to house, is freshly laundered, and each home has enough towels and mop pads to do the job right. And I pack it up in those standardized little one house allotments. I'm all done. I don't have to wait for the laundry to finish and worry about, oh, my stuff and bags is five o'clock, six o'clock, waiting for the next day. I can just run that laundry through the washer and the dryer, over the course of the day and not worry about it. As long as the last dryer cycle is running dry while I walk out the door, I can dress it the next day. So it gets you home way faster. Eventually, as your company grows, you're gonna to wanna to hire one of your employees to help you in the morning dispatch, help you share supplies with your employees and have them hang back and pack all those rags and bags for you. And then they can go out and clean as well. And you can get home to your family on time and everyone has clean allotment of towels and mops and rags and everything they need, meat per home, no cross-contamination, no fuss, with high quality performance, you know is gonna help your employees clean as fast and as deep as possible with as little effort as possible. And that's what you really want at the end of the day is towels and mops that perform. And that's what you're gonna have in this kit, all designed turnkey so you can just open your business and focus on growth rather than supplies. Hope that helps you out. And uh, let's see here. And uh, Cecilia, um, please do reach out to me. Uh, I, it's a great question. And I wanna make sure I get you some treats as well. Um, let's see if we can get you a good deal on that kit. Let's see here. Do you have any suggestions for how to clean the outside of air filters? Is there a special vacuum for this? When I change the disposable filter for the machine, I see tons of dust and fur on the metal grating, but it's hard to clean the inside and out. Great question. So when it comes to filters and vents, it's all about vacuums and brushes. Um, if you've got any sort of um, AC machinery, venting machinery, uh, central air conditioning, et cetera, any of that fun jazz, 
they're going to collect all the dust and dirt your home. That's just the nature of things. They got to sweep up the air and suck in and it's all going to stick. It's going to be gross. But if you use the dust cup attachment to your caster vacuum regularly, you can get that all out easy peasy. It's going to suck right off. More often than not, if you're finding that it's hard to do, it's most likely A, you've waited too long, and B, you're not coming at it from the right side. Sometimes, um, depending on the machine you're dealing with, they're designed to catch the dust and dirt, and if you're sucking from the wrong side, it can be a lot more frustration than if you suck from the side it wants to come off on. So make sure you brush on both sides as you vacuum, and it'll make it a lot easier. But your um, vacuum is your best friend when it comes to getting most of that off. But I will show you one other trick, which is our fluffy duster. So your fluffy duster, if you haven't used it before, moves into any shape. You can see I can literally do anything with it, okay? Um, and if you have vents and the AC, um, you know, uh, air vents and returns, this bad boy is going to take care of that for you because these big fingers are going to go in between those vents. And what I see happening with most people's homes is they aren't dusting often enough. They wait till those vents are absolutely nasty and hanging with gray dust. And the oils and dirt and dust in the air is making this dust oil coating sandwich mess on these vents. And now it needs to be wet, cleaned, and a lot more work to get it off. If every time you do your basic, you know, run around the house cleaning, just grab your duster and hit the vents, hit the dock, tops of the door frames, go for the cobwebs, all the basic high dusting is what we call it professionally. If you high dust every time you clean, so at least twice a month, nothing will ever build up to the point that it's hard to do. When people that tell you, oh, I hate cleaning X, it's because they waited too long and they think that the only way to clean it is that restoration stage where it's gross. If you keep up with it regularly, nothing is hard to clean. It's just restoration work that stinks. So take my advice on this one. If you don't like cleaning all those filters and vents, clean them more often. You'll like it 10 times better because what you don't like is restoration work. You'll love maintenance cleaning. Let's see. Pro cleaner here. I don't mind either way, but if you need boundaries, i.e. not running the vacuum when the clean space, uh, let me know ahead of time. Communication is key. Crystal, great answer. Thank you as a fellow professional. Spot on advice. Um, when you hire a professional cleaner, you got to have an authentic relationship. And Crystal, spot on. Creating boundaries, being honest about your needs, being honest about feedback and the cleaning in the home is how you have a healthy relationship with anybody, including your cleaner. If you're passive aggressive and, you know, pick up your laptop all in a huff because they're making noise while you're trying to work and you're mad they didn't notice you didn't want to vacuum, that's on you. You got to say something. You can say, hey, good to see you today. I actually have a meeting from, you know, one to two. Uh, can you try to make sure you're not vacuuming this area of the house before the meeting, you know, or can you do it earlier now and do the house a lot of order today because I don't want the sound of the vacuum on my call. Totally fine. Be honest about this sort of communication. As long as you have a healthy relationship with somebody, they know that you're in your home and you're trying to live your life. They want to help you. Most cleaners like Crystal are going to respect those boundaries. They want to be helpful. Um, you just got to be straight with them. Um, and so that's great advice, Crystal. What do you think about Roomba? I love Roomba. Great question. So I'll tell you why I love Roomba, but Roomba does not replace your real vacuum. The Roomba, it, it's expensive, but what it does for you is it does that routine maintenance cleaning. Just like I mentioned a few moments ago, when people tell you they don't like cleaning, it's that they don't like restoration cleaning because they wait too long. If you don't like cleaning, it's because you're waiting too long to do it. So every time you do do it, it's this horrible slog with really hard work. And of course, you're going to dread that. If you keep up with things regularly and not much has built up, it's easy glide and slide wiping and a quick little spray of all-purpose cleaner and some you know lovely high-quality microfiber and poof, you're good to go. If you wait till everything's gross, then it's scrubbing and slogging and vacuuming and a lot of work. 
the Roomba makes your floors easy maintenance because it does that recurring work for you. It'll do its little job getting out there every day, picking up the crumbs, picking up the pet hair, doing all the basics so that when you go to clean in a couple weeks for real, the vacuuming isn't a slog. There isn't pet hair floated and stuck all over everything. It's done the base work for you. Um, I will say for those of you that um, haven't looked at a Roomba in a long time, they have upgraded their tech considerably. So if you have a really old Roomba or you saw the first Roombas and said, eh, I encourage you look at the new Roombas. Now, they ain't cheap. I will say they are an investment, but the new ones with the newer high tech, they've made them smart. They can do things like, see, there's a staircase, not fling themselves down it. They can learn the layout of your house and you can tell them which room you want Roomba and which one you don't. Um, they can see, oh, look, there's somebody's you know headphones with a cord sticking out. Let me not suck that up into the machine. It can sense objects. Um, that was not present in the earlier models. Um, they even now have a pet poop sensor. Yes, they do. Um, that used to be an old model. I'm sure you've seen many a funny meme online of, you know, the uh, Roomba catching somebody's, you know, pet oopsie and going rah, 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 over the floor. It's gross. Um, luckily, they've made newer models that don't do that anymore. But you got to pay for the nice new model. So it's, uh, it's an investment. But man, do they work better once you get the new ones. Uh, let's see here. Next question. We replaced our blinds with those fabric ones that can be lowered and heightened from the top and the bottom. Are they any easier to clean than the plastic ones? They at least seem like they're less likely to break when cleaning. Great question. I'll be honest. They aren't easy either. There is no such thing as an easy blind to clean, except for I find the easiest are the big, thick wood ones, which are more like plantation shutters and those big, thick wood blinds. Those tend to, because they're wider, thicker planks, they tend to use stronger ropes. They have less surface to clean. They're finished with uh, polyurethane, which uh, doesn't hold on to dirt as easily as plastic. They're just an overall easier to maintain experience. So those are pricey. I know they are, but they're a lot easier to keep up with than the little plasticky ones. Fabric ones, Follow the manufacturer's instructions and how you take care of them. But again, frequent vacuuming, like I described before, is going to be your best bet. The more frequently you vacuum them, the less buildup you're going to get in those blinds. Um, but all blinds do run the risk of snapping strings. They're pain in the neck. Um, we love them for what they do for us, but they are not easy to maintain. Next question here. Oh, sorry. That is us answering ourselves. I'm not going to answer that one. <laughs> sorry, guys. Oh, why does it keep doing that? Sorry. I grabbed the wrong one again. Got a question from Michelle here. What is the best way to get my glass stovetop clean? Great question, Michelle. So glass stovetops are all the rage and they should be. They're wonderful, but they do require unique care. First and foremost, they are glass, so a lot of the rules around glass apply, but they usually have paint on them as well to draw you those sections and circles of where the glass is. So not everything you can use on glass, you can use on glass cooktops because you could end up screwing up the paint. So if you are a home consumer, I recommend um, a Wyman's Glass Cooktop Polish. It is a wonderful product, does its job very easily. You're going to get all the basic, you know, splashing goo and dirt off with whatever all-purpose cleaner, sponge and uh, Dawn, whatever you want, just to get the rough stuff off. Once you get the basic rough stuff off, you're going to apply the Wyman's cooktop polish with ideally a nice high quality microfiber towel. And you're going to buff that stuff in and it's going to create a glorious shine take off any of that buildup, um, does a great job. If it's bad and you have, you know, deposits, you can use uh, the back of your uh, kitchen sponge, that sort of non-woven scrubby side, use that with the Wyman's and that will help um, buff off any of that buildup and get you back to the shine. If you have really bad buildup and or your commercial outfit, we have a lot of um, stovetops to cover, 
the Wyman cooktop polish can get pricey. In that case, I recommend Barkeeper's Friend. Barkeeper's Friend will also scrub off all that buildup, is glass safe, will do a beautiful job without scratching, and it will scrub off all that buildup. So put a little water on there, put a little Barkeeper's Friend, scour away with the back of the kitchen sponge. It is messy. You're going to have to wash it off. So make sure you have a microfiber towel ready to uh, rinse and wring it out and wipe off all that residue and get it clean. You can use a little of that polish at the end to give you a nice shine if you want to. But honestly, if you've gotten it good and clean, just the regular all-purpose towel will do an awesome job and uh, buffing out all of those um, streaks and residue and build up. Let's see here. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry if I missed the, my question being answered. I'm researching my own cleaning service, and I have nothing as of yet. Again, I'm so sorry if I missed your response. Oh, Cecilia, no problem. <laughs> All right, well, I'll answer it again. For those that are listening, I apologize if there's a repeat here. But very quickly, I actually designed a full cleaning company starter kit. It's one of the first big products I designed when I joined my Fiber Wholesale. I used to work for a made pro residential cleaning franchise for over 18 years where I perfected what was needed in um, per clean per home. Uh, I've had 18 years of testing to figure out exactly what people should be bringing into the home so that they're using as few products as possible, right amounts, so they can get everything from ceiling to floor clean beautifully. And I knew how hard it was to achieve that. And I wanted to give everyone else a turnkey solution so they didn't have to hire a full-time me to figure it out. So our cleaning company starter kit, if you go on to markfarberwholesales.com, uh, actually, let me see if I have a link to it here. Um, hopefully I do. Um, yes, I do. All right. So our how to start a cleaning company business uh, microfiber kit, it's uh, $300. Uh, it gives you enough product for one cleaner to clean over a year. So our products last over 300 plus washes. So this is going to last over a year for you. Um, and our hardware lasts years. Um, and it has everything you need from uh, ceiling to floor to clean everything beautifully. Um, and then the right quantities too. And again, if you go back and watch the older footage earlier, I'll explain it in detail there, but just to give everyone a quick summary, there's three days worth of inventory. One day's worth that you can use to clean, one day's worth you used yesterday that you're gonna wash, one day's worth that you washed yesterday that you're gonna pack up so you're ready for tomorrow. That way you're doing one load of laundry a day, pack up easy early in the morning, get home to your family on time, and give every one of your cleaners incredible quality microfiber that cleans faster and deeper with less work for every stroke so that your staff is using products that lift them up instead of pulling them back. All right, let's see here. Um, Cecilia, thank you. What's your email address to reach out in case I have more questions? Absolutely. Cecilia, please reach out to us at ask an expert at microfiberwholesale.com. Again, A S K A N E X P E R T at microfiberwholesale.com. I check that email regularly. I'm also writing constant blogs about running cleaning businesses. So if you reach out to that email address, we'll put you on our email list and you'll see that twice a week I'm putting out emails about cleaning tips and advice. Um, and many of which are pertaining for professional cleaners. I have a whole, several articles I've already written about how to grow your cleaning business, how to hire your first set of employees, all that stuff. So I'm happy to send that to you and make sure you start your business on the right foot. Let's see here, Crystal. I just ordered one of those fluffy dusters. I'm honestly kind of psyched for its impending arrival. <laughs> Crystal, honestly, you're going to have a blast. I will tell you. By the way, for anyone who's wondering, the fluffy duster, legit. Okay, everything that you're annoyed to clean in your house, this is going to do it for you because it bends into any shape. So if you've got big tube air vents, you just curve it. You got kitchen cabinets, you just L it. You got ceiling fans, you squish it in this little C shape. And now you can do the top and the bottom of the ceiling fan blade, easy peasy, from the ground. Um, you know, no, no shade on my other cleaning experts online, but I see a lot of people telling you, climb up there with a pillowcase and clean it and all that. And it does work, but now you're up on a ladder. And frankly, as much as I can keep your feet on the ground, I'm happy. Because if you look at the professional cleaning world, the number one, two, and three source of claims for workers' comp injury 
is slip and fall on wet surfaces and falls from height and overexertion. Those are the trifecta. If I can get rid of those, nobody gets hurt. And what happens is everyone goes, I can lift it. And they pick up things that are too heavy. I can reach it. And they pull out their back. I can get to it. And they climb on something stupid and down they go. Everyone's not nearly as safe on ladders as they think they are. People think they know how to use them. They don't. And there's a lot of injuries every year with people hurting themselves on ladders. So if I can keep you on the ground, I want to. So for most people, if they use that duster with the extension pole, they can reach their sling fans, clean top and bottom from the ground and never have to pull up the ladder. Let's see here. Another one for you. I made notes and missed you last week. <laughs> I hate stove and oven grates and racks with the burnt on gunk. I use the ammonia in the tub and let it sit for uh, many hours overnight. And it's really bad, but that um, it takes so long. So Crystal, oh, I feel you um, uh, right here. I'm going to tell you, you're already doing a lot of the things I would have mentioned to you, which is, yes, if your grates and oven and stove uh, are absolutely awful, the answer is ammonia. And nobody likes ammonia. I hate ammonia too. I feel you. Um, the way I address the ammonia is not in my tub. What I will suggest that you do if you're doing that again is you're going to take a contractor's trash bag, big old one, put the grates in there, throw in a couple cups. You don't actually have to have the whole thing submerged. Um, the fumes alone will actually do the work if you tie it up. So you splash in a couple cups into the contractor's bag, set it outside, tie it up in a tight knot, and the fumes from the ammonia will actually break down everything that's built up on those grates. And you untie it in the morning, scrub them up, put them back. Um, so obviously you're not going to do that every time. Hopefully you're just going to keep up with it with a good degreaser. Um, what I will recommend to you, if you haven't seen it, that should help you some, is I'm going to recommend to you, uh, let's see here, because you are a commercial entity, this will probably be a good one for you to be aware of. And that is Dawn Heavy Duty Degreaser from the Procter & Gamble Professional line. So Dawn Heavy Duty Degreaser is one of the safest but most effective food service degreasers on the market. Um, degreasers are able to bond to oils and break them up and break them apart. We love that about them. But most degreasers are heavy solvents, which can be extremely dangerous for painted surfaces, for uh, wood and other th surfaces that we care about. Dawn heavy duty degreaser is just the right balance where they got the strength, but they didn't put in any crazy solvents. So it's not going to damage everything around the house. Uh, it's much safer than the standard degreaser. So if you are fighting grates and uh, uh, stovetops and oven hoods, um, Dawn Heavy Duty Degreaser will make that work so much easier. And again, if you keep up with it regularly, that Dawn Heavy Duty Degreaser is going to help you not get to the stage where you need that ammonia. Um, for the home consumer, I should mention that there is an easy off degreaser, not the easy off oven cleaner. I love that product too, but it's a separate beast. The easy off degreaser is a wonderful product for home consumers. Same general concept as what I just described for the commercial product. Um, obviously, I like the commercial product better because it is stronger, um, but it will do a great job for you um, if you are a home consumer and you don't want to get commercial products. Next question here. Um, if we want to just get back to basics for keeping our house clean efficiently and effectively, is there some kind of starter kit or checklist, any schedule and how often to do the tasks? It always feels so haphazard right now. Awesome question, Lynn. And the answer is, honestly, you're just going to need to join my uh, email list because I actually been writing about all this stuff just recently. Um, for those that don't know, we put out a regular blog um, where I discuss everything from spring cleaning tips to basic cleaning to how to reclaim your garage, you name it, I cover it. And for basic cleaning, absolutely. Um, it's all about prioritizing top down workaround cleaning. So I'll spend, explain it really fast, which is when you want to clean a space efficiently, you wanna first organize yourself in terms of the order. 
I always want to clean the kitchen first so I don't contaminate it with germs from other rooms. I always want to get my most difficult rooms, which are the bathrooms and the kitchens, done early before I'm exhausted. So I'm going to start doing those next. I want to clean every room I'm in from the top down because I want to work with gravity and send the dirt down to the ground as opposed to like, you know, cleaning the floors and then cleaning the counters and having to scoop everything into my hand because I'm scared of getting it on my clean floors. So high dust, upper cabinets, counters, lower cabinets, floor. If you work that order and you're just following your hand around the room, that's going to uh, take care of it for you. Now, you asked an awesome question and I, 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 I almost feel like it's a giveaway because like literally it's a giveaway. Yes, I'm going to give away to you. So you asked my favorite question so far, which is the basics of how to clean everything. So I'm going to help you clean everything. And I am sending you our ultimate microfiber cleaning kit. Yes, yes, I am. Because I get to. I get to play Oprah because it's fun. Um, this has everything you need to clean from top to bottom. And you're going to learn to clean the right way on me. So you need to email Ask an Expert Lynn. And I will get this kit sent off to you. And it's going to show you to clean the right way from top to bottom. And you're going to use the duster in here. That's going to be this Chanel duster right here to do all your high dusting. Then you're going to use our all-purpose towels to clean all your counters. You're going to use our glass towels that are also in the kit to go ahead and shine up your glass. You're going to use uh, one of our mops to keep your floor clean with high-quality microfiber. And you're going to use one of our dry dust tools to dust and sweep and get all that hair off for you. Top to bottom, we're going to take care of you and make sure you know how to clean everything the right way. Um, but big picture, set a game plan. Kitchens first, then bathrooms, top to bottom in your rooms. Don't waste time on uh, running up and down for levels, though. So if you're going to, usually what I would do in a house order, kitchen first, Go upstairs, find that master bathroom, clean it. Find the other bathroom and in it up there, clean it. Clean all the bedrooms and hallways as I work my way down that hall. Clean the stairs on the way down. Get to the living room, main level area. Clean any remaining bathrooms downstairs. Then I'm going to clean those living areas, working my way, if I'm professional, out the door. But you're going to work your way from one side to the other of the house because you don't want to track over your own clean floors. If you clean in that methodology in each room top down, you find cleaning goes easy, easy, easy. And the best trick I can give you for uh, keeping yourself organized, you're going to laugh, is your own laundry basket. Take your laundry basket, plunk it in front of the door of the room every time you go to clean. It's going to force you to stay in the room. It's going to be a visual reminder not to leave, finish the work, and anything you find in the room that doesn't belong, you stick it in the basket as opposed to leaving the room. Finish, finish, finish everything you need to do. And when you're done, you can take that basket with you to the next room. And anything that's in there that belongs in that next room, you put it away. If not, you just wait to the end and you play Santa Claus with your basket, putting everything away at the end, but you stay on target and focused. Most people when they clean where they feel haphazard, it's because they are running around haphazard. They're cleaning the living room and they find, oh, this is the toys belong in the kids' room. They go up to the kids' room. Oh, look, the kids' room is a mess. They start picking up there. Oh, wait, this belongs in the kitchen. They run down there. Oh, look at my counters. Clean over there. And they a third clean the whole house constantly until they're exhausted and go, oh, this house doesn't look any better. I hate cleaning. If you stay focused and clean each room like you mean it and you don't let yourself get distracted, each room will be truly clean and you're able to look at it and go, that was worth the energy. I did it right. I got it right. I can move on to the next room and not have the whole house look disheveled even after hours of cleaning. I know we're getting close to the, uh, we're over our hour here, but I want to make sure I answer these last few questions. Um, does the lanolin on wool balls affect microfiber? I've been using the spiky dryer balls because I wasn't sure. Crystal, you're 100% right. God, you're good. I'm keeping you. You honestly need to come back every week because you know your stuff. So for those asking it, or those wondering what we're talking about, when you clean microfiber, you want to make sure that you're not using any sort of softeners because those softeners are going to goop up and oil up and fill in all the holes, the microfiber that you're trying to preserve. When you clean with microfiber, I want those fibers stripped and clean so they can grab on dirt. If they're coated with conditioners and oils and fabric softeners, they can't do their job. If you are 
avoiding them in the washer cycle, you also have to avoid them in the dryer cycle. That means no dryer sheets, no fabric softener, and the wool balls have lanolin in them. They will also shed oils into your towels. If you want your towels fluffy without a softener, what you want is dryer balls, the little plastic spiky ones, exactly like Crystal mentioned. I highly recommend them for washing microfiber, especially if you're working commercially, because what they do is they whack all the dirt and the hair and the fluff and the pet hair and all that nonsense and the lint out of the microfiber in the dryer cycle. Dryer balls are a cleaner's best friend because people tell me, oh, my microfiber, I don't like it because it gets all linty and gross. Mostly they overloaded their wash cycles. There wasn't enough room for agitation, so it's all stuck in there. And then in the dryer, they um, didn't use dryer balls, so a lot of the lint stays tra trapped on the towels. If you use that dryer ball, it will whack all the lint out or whack all the hairs out and give you beautiful results. So you're doing exactly right, Crystal. Good job. Uh, let's see here. Yes, love, love Don DeGreaser. I recommend to customers now that they can get on Amazon. Yes, Don DeGreaser is chef's kiss. Love that product. I've loved it for years. Um, you can get it at Amazon. You can get it at your local staples. Um, honestly, it's kind of it's kind of the cool thing about this modern century. We used to keep all those commercial products hidden from consumers. So they had to use the junk in the grocery store. And you have to be careful. With great power comes great responsibility. If you're going to buy commercial products, you better read the back of the bottle and make sure you're using whatever safety gear it tells you. I want to hear you telling me, oh, I, you know, gave myself bleach burns and, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, respiratory illness because I wasn't paying attention and Melissa, you told me to. No, no, I told you. You can get commercial products now if you go online. It's awesome. But read the back of the bottle and be careful. Make sure you know what you're getting before you bring it home. A lot of these products are used by professionals who have been trained on how to use them right. So if you want to get a hold of them, that's awesome. But be careful. Read before you buy and follow the instructions because these aren't the retail nonsense you got at the grocery store that, you know, fright, fright, frankly, you have to try hard to hurt yourself with the retail product. Commercial products, you can give yourself some permanent damage. So be careful. Let's see here. Um, last couple questions in here. How often should engineered hardwood floors actually be cleaned? Not just vacuumed, but with, and with what product? Great, great question. So, all, so it's a, honestly, it's a little bit of a trick question. All hard floors, whether they're engineered wood or real wood or vinyl or tile, are going to need to be cleaned as frequently as your foot traffic requires. It all depends how you run your house. If you are living by yourself and you kick your shoes off every time you walk in through the door, your floors are going to be dramatically different than your next door neighbor who's got four kids and two dogs, none of whom ever take their shoes off. They're tracking in 10 times more dirt onto their floors. So their mopping schedule is going to be drastically different than yours. You have to base it on your lifestyle. I will tell you that most people need their floors wet cleaned at least twice a month. That'd be my minimum. Um, to do so, I recommend a neutral pH floor soap and a microfiber flat mop. So uh, I will show you my favorite real quickly here. Good old Mr. Clean. It's a classic, but it does its job right. It's neutral pH. Uh, the free smell is lovely. Uh, I also enjoy Fabuloso, another great product. Both these products are safe on marble, on engineered wood, on uh, vinyl, on laminate, any of those floorings. It's safe on. It's neutral pH. It's going to do a great job. You only need like two ounces per uh, gallon. If you're using the commercial formula, it's only one ounce per gallon. Does a great job. But the key here is how much of it you're using when you mop. When you're mopping any floors that are delicate, like laminate floors or wood floors or any floors that you know you can flood and cause water damage, the key is to use as little as possible. There's two ways to achieve that. Way one is to make a bucket of your floor soap diluted and then take your mop pad and actually dip it in, fold it up and wring it out good and go ahead and use that. Um, and that will allow you to manage how much water you're putting on the floor. The other way that actually I prefer is take a spray bottle, good old quart spray bottle and make up a fourth of a gallon of the floor cleaner as opposed to the whole big bucket. 
Uh, just divide the number by four um, and make yourself a quart bottle. That way you can spray a little area of floor, take your mop head and this time rinse and wring it out with just plain water from your sink. Just, you know, warm tap water, wring it out, spritz the little area, mop it up, spritz the little area, mop it up. Now the truth is these mop pads are good enough. You can actually clean with just water. If your maintenance cleaning and the floor is in good condition, you can literally just rinse and wring it with water. And this has enough microfiber to it to actually pick up all the dirt and germs and oil with just water. Uh, they've actually done EPA testing and microfiber can pick up over 95% of dirt and germs with just water. It's really impressive. But most home consumers aren't cleaning regularly. They're waiting till their floors got dried on, yuck, and build up in goo. And at that point, you do need some soap. So that's why I recommend taking a spray bottle, making a little quarter, you know, quart worth, spritz, spritz, mop, mop. Use this as the fresh water to rinse off uh, the soap. Spritz and mop, spritz and mop. That's going to keep you using minimal water and get you gloriously clean results with minimal water usage and eliminates the risk of any of those damages you see to people's laminate floors where they get water in the seams and it starts to bubble and screw up the finish or wood floors where they start to cause damage. If you use that spritzing method, that's going to save you a lot of aggravation. All right. I think we are at the end of the questions and we're certainly well past the end of the hour. So we're going to wrap up today. I'm so excited to have given away some fun treats today. Please remember to email me at askanexpert at microfiberwholesale.com so I can make sure to get your shipping addresses to give you all, all the treats that you earned today. And for everybody else that didn't get a prize, don't worry. You still get 15% off for Ask Me 15 promo code. Please come enjoy and buy some wonderful products. I want to remind everybody we're doing this every week, Friday at 1 p.m., Come hang out with us, ask great questions, get fun stuff. Subscribe, like, and follow us. We're going to be constantly putting out uh, blog articles and reels and posts, teaching you everything I know about cleaning as fast as I can put them out there. Um, I'm here as a service to you. My Fiber Wholesale realized rather than paying all this money just for advertising, showing pictures of towels, they could pay to have someone teach you the stuff you need to know anyway. And you'd still hear about the product, but you'd actually be learning. And it's providing a service as opposed to just pictures of towels. So I'm here to make sure all of you know how to use their products right, how to keep your home beautifully clean. And we're here to service the public and our customers and hope that you become raving fans. So please like, follow, subscribe, uh, get on our newsletters, come check out our product, and we hope to see you here next week. Thank you all for joining us. And we look forward to having you next Friday, one o'clock. Have a great afternoon, everybody.